You're okay, Hi, Arimai, Arimai, Arimai. Read the prayer. We ask that council discussions and decisions, the representatives we have elected may govern the Far North District Council with imagination, skill and wisdom to achieve a fairer and more united community that enhances the well-being of our district and solves its problems efficiently and effectively. Amen. And I welcome you all here today, and it's good to see you all. I um, very quickly, uh, as you know, I was involved in the Christchurch earthquake um, 10 years ago yesterday. I went down to a function to one of that on Sunday night. Unfortunately, the plane that I was at, the only night we were leaving on, on yesterday, got cancelled and we had to leave early, so we weren't able to see the official ceremony. But we did watch and see, and um, it was very moving. And I'd just ask us, please, just to pause for a minute, a moment of silence, while we think of those victims of the Christchurch earthquake. discussion last night with Harry Burkhardt, 
who complimented Anne and all of you on the way in which the workshop was held. I've had comments also from Danny. And what came out of that meeting from their perspective was that it was really positive and that we have an opportunity to move ahead as a consequence of it, probably like no other local authority has, and that we can probably be certainly leading in this district, but leading across the nation. And so when we had discussions uh, about where to from here, as Harry said to me last night, Murray Ward's are but part of the issue. And what he got out of it was, and what I got out of yesterday's meeting, and I hope and I think most of you who I've spoken to did, was we need to do a hell of a lot better consulting with our communities than we've done in the past. And so <coughs> there's discussions we need to be talking in far more depth with our iwi leaders. We need to be talking far more with our business community, although we do talk with them once a month, with federated farmers. The issues that Felicity were raising yesterday about how can we restructure or how can we include, as other local authorities have, and where can we consider the probability, the possibility of having an iwi representative on a committee with a or some other representative that we might find, like we do with Bruce Robinson, who's the only example we have up here. So we need to have those discussions. John Busich keeps talking about the issues of local boards as opposed to community boards. Then as much as giving the local community the opportunity to have an input and a say, and to allow then the local authority, whether it be the community board or the us as community, to give them support and help. And I think yesterday set up a wonderful opportunity for us to reflect on where we've been, but more important than what we might do going forward. And one of the things that I would love us to consider, and I may, depending on the discussions that each of you make as we discuss this issue, perhaps set up working parties so that we have better liaison structure. This is from what we've done in the past is we've left it with Sean and the operation. And quite honestly, well, they've done the absolute best. We need to be part of it. And so I'd like to think that we will talk about and consider setting up establishing working parties. I don't want us to get into the detail of that today, just the principle of it. And then we'll sit down and talk amongst ourselves how we might achieve that going forward. But the whole purpose of it is, is to make sure that we then have better community input into us and vice versa. And I think we can get something really, really positive out of this whole discussion as a consequence. And so that everybody, our community, our district, our organisation will all be better off for it. And so I, um, I know I just need to uh, go back to the agenda, but I just wanted to put that on the floor, that when we've had a discussion around the recommendation here, I also want us then to consider what tomorrow looks like and going forward. And it's likely that I will move a resolution suggesting, recommending that we set up working parties so that the uh, Chief Executive then has a direction from Council so that it's positive and firm and it's understood rather than just <coughs> that, really, really, that we get on and actually make this happen. We've got an opportunity over the next 18 months, in my view, to set a platform for the incoming council. And I think we should take that opportunity. I also just want to pass on one final comment. Harry, in his conversation that he had with me, said, and by the way, you have four young people in your council who are outstanding. Mockle, Felicity, Kelly and Rachel. Did I get that right? Kelly, Felicity, Rachel, Mockle, I've got the four of them. And he said, they're dynamic and they're the future. And I said to him, Harry, you're so right. The problem that a silly old bugger like me has is trying to keep up with them. But they need to be part of 
and of where we go as we move forward and have this discussion. So I just want to acknowledge that comment that Harry made about the four of you. And also just say again, thanks to everybody who was involved. Um, I think we've got an opportunity now to make a significant difference going over the next six months. So having said all that, I will now just bring us back to the agenda for and, and uh, I want to move the recommendation. Uh, and the reason why I want to move the recommendation is on the basis that I think if we do this, it will just cause so much tension without any reward in our community. And I think it would be unfortunate indeed. So I'll move the recommendation. Do I have a second? I'm happy to second. Um, sorry, what we've got ahead of you, Kelly, but uh, we can we can have joint seconds. But, but, so, is there anyone wishes to make any comment before I put the vote? I would like. To I do wish to make comments, please. Okay, okay yeah, well, I'll come to you, Kelly. Just let Mohu. Uh, kia ora, thank you, um, Mekara. I'm in support of this recommendation to do a non-binding poll um, for the following reasons. These polls historically have a low turnout. Our local government elections themselves have a low turnout. 43% is the national average, and we're actually better than that. We're at 47% at the last election, but polls or by-elections have an even lower turnout historically than that. The last time that this council in 2015 took it to a poll, um, I think that there was between 30 and 40 per cent was the turnout of the return rate on that poll itself. So it's not really good value for money. Um, and they don't capture the voices of those that we need to hear from. Um, if we were going to run a poll about development plans in the Bay of Islands, I think it would be inappropriate for us to poll Te Hiku or Hukia Kaiku here about whether or not to adopt the plan. So why would we ask non-Māori about how Māori want to be represented at our council through a poll that would cost us between eighty and $90,000? Um, the local electoral Māori wards and constituencies amendment bill, which is, uh, to my knowledge, going to have its third reading tomorrow, um, was set up to obviously empower Māori and to, to make it to the council table, but, but also uh, so that councils could save money through the permission demands um, to poll their decisions and the council's leadership. Um, I think that the eighty dollars or $90,000 could be better spent. Um, for example, one of the COPAPA that was brought before us as an option on saving money at this council was our cadet programme, which involves many um, young Māori youth, uh, a few of whom Councillor Smith and I met this morning because they're going to be a part of our two-year programme. So, when we look at that being on the chopping block, and from memory, that was $120,000 of savings. This is 90 that we would potentially spend just at a whim for a result that we know isn't going to be good value for money, and that I could I could do a pretty accurate guesstimation of what, what its results would be for us anyway. Um, a poll does not empower Māori, um, which is something that Māori would seek to give effect to our treaty obligations. Um, I know that this is not a debate on the merits of whether or not to establish Māori work for the far north, but it is a step in the journey of the far north. In this discussion, a district of 35,000 Māori, 10,000 Te Reo speakers, and a part of the journey of making our district a safe space to be Māori and to be involved, engaged, and to participate in all facets of our community. And should you wish to give a karakia in Te Reo Māori and not to translate that into English, you can do so safely and you can do that without prejudice. And it's about opening the door to let Māori into the decision-making processes of this council, which is outlined in the Local Government Act. Um, this is only a small step in there. It's not wasting $90,000 in my opinion. Thank you. Yeah, right. I'll take Kelly and then Matty. Thank you, Your Worship. <clears throat> and I agree with um, what Moko has raised. Councillor Tekanea, apology. Um, I just wanted to ask the question. I want to highlight in the report that option two um, of the report goes into um, using a formal consultation process to gauge community feedback over the next, um, you know, over our consultation period. And I just wanted to ask staff 
if doing this recommendation for, you know, not doing a non-binding poll, does that mean we we could still have the opportunity um, to include this as part of our engagement? Um, through the chair, um, Councillor Stratford, yes. Um, the, there will be a survey with the engagement activities during the month of March, and it does um, reference the representation review as a whole, but it also references Maori Wars. And so we will be getting feedback from all the people that we have a corridor with as to whether they are in um, support to, to get their feedback essentially on, on the topic of Māori wards and the representation review. And at, the, at this point, it is planned that all of that feedback will be collated into a, um, a workshop with elected members at the end of March or the beginning of April where we can look at what the results overall of the representation review and Māori wards is telling us. Thank you, you Carol. Thank you, Carolyn. Kelly, thank you, Yes, yes, it, it does. It does. Thank you very much. Thank you. Matty, you wanted to make a comment? On the 29th of October last year, we moved <coughs> to hold a binding poll for Mali seats for the 2 and 22 election. Is that, is that correct? That's correct, Maddie, but that's going to be a so null by the legislation going through the House now. That won't happen. So, I'm a bit confused with this non-binding poll. Right. What does that actually mean, non-binding poll? So, if I can help answer the question, I may not get it entirely right. So, what used to be the law was that if 5% of the voters in any given district ask by a petition for a poll to be held against something or about something that council were doing, and then more than 50% of the people who, who then voted disagreed with council, that became binding. And the resolution that the council had passed uh, and it only applied to Mary Woods, as it happened. Um, um, if, if more than 50% voted against it, it was a binding poll and it said that's the end of it, there are no Mary Woods. That's now disappeared, Matty. And what is in place and has been in place for a long time, councils have always had the right to have a non binding poll. But and all it's used for is information. Council, if, if, if you had a poll and 90% said we're against what council's doing, council can ignore it and still carry on doing what they're doing. It's just an indication. It's just information. It's just like a survey that we do. The, the, we're doing it going around the district now, asking people about our district scheme. It's information only, Maddie. So people can express so the view of the so the but we don't have to right. adhere to it. Pardon? So the ratepayer has a right to ask for a referendum on Māori seats? No, not now. Not now. Um, the council is the only one who can now make a decision to have a... ask for a non-binding poll on an issue, which in this case would be Māori seats. Only council can ask for that. There's no right for a petitioner to come and say we want a non-binding poll 5%. That doesn't apply. It only applied in the case of a binding poll. So the only people who can make a decision to hold a poll is the council. And the council, as I say, having got the verdict of whatever the poll might be, can ignore it. So, so we the... can go forward. So we can go forward. Ford, um, in regard to the Māori seats for the 2022 election for the Parnell District Council. If you Sorry, vote Matt. for it, Matty, we can. Thank you, Kelly. Thanks for the interjection. So, so we have a resolution on the books, Matty, that says there will not be Māori wards for 22 and 25. That stands. Okay, that resolution was passed 
Back in October, I think it was. <coughs> okay. I think you're right, Matty. Get you in a minute. Yeah, I'm right. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Felicity wanted to make comment, then Rachel, and then Mike. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I just wanted to raise that um, I agree that this poll would not be a good use of resources. And I would like to see our resources better utilised for more participation of Māori um, if we aren't going to have representation of Māori um, with Māori wards. Um, the example that I provided was um, on committees, uh, iwi appointed representatives with voting rights and speaking rights at council. Um, other councils do have this, and it is one of our options that I'll bring up uh, in our working group and that I did bring up at the workshop. Felicity, can we just, we'll have that conversation in a few minutes, um, if that's okay, more, in more detail. We just talked about Thank this you. Not bit, whether you have the non or not. Rachel, do you wish to make a comment? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I support the recommendation on the table today. As a governance group, we are actively encouraging our CEO to continuously search for efficiencies in our organisation. Uh, as leaders of the organisation, we have an obligation to consider when we are given the opportunity to be more efficient and work smarter. So I really appreciate um, that this has come to us to make that decision and to deliver efficiencies from a cost-saving point of view. I agree with all of the points that Councillor Tepenia has raised, so I'm not going to um, reiterate those. I also support what uh, Councillor Stratford has raised about option two. And in the interest of gov good governance, my recommendation is that we include that in the resolution. So your worship is the mover of the resolution. I would like to see that and that council undertakes the process outlined in option two of this report. Uh, that is our tool to ensure that we are giving good governance direction to our CEO for this organisation. It is also our, top, our tool for accountability from both sides. So um, I would like to see that there, but I will leave that in your hands as the mover. Uh, Your Worship, I just want to come back to the comment that you opened with. We have an opportunity to set a platform for the incoming council. We should take that opportunity. I absolutely agree. And on that point, I'd really like to acknowledge the minister who has worked really hard to give us this opportunity to reconsider, to learn from where we've come from, to look at where we want to be and to really walk the walk in terms of how we might deliver that. So I'm in support of this resolution. Thank you. So just so I'm clear on what you're asking, option two, which is on page 15, mm -hmm. you're saying that we consider as part of the resolution that we establish Mary Woods to take effect from 2022? No, that's not what that, that option said. There says that there will be an opportunity that will lead into the eight. April 2021 Council meeting, where Council agreed or not to reconsider the matter of my awards in doing so, there would be three options. It's and it's got those three options. will be held in March leading to a report on the 8th of April. Will your Council agree or not, or not to reconsider the matter of Mary Ward? So, Your Worship, Council has been asked for clarification as to whether or not that would be the direction of travel. We've had confirmation from staff that that would be. I'm simply just asking that we echo that in our resolution. All right. Well, what we may do is. Um, Take that as a separate resolution, I think, rather than um, add it in as part of this resolution. I would raise a point of order at this point, Your Worship, that we have a resolution on the Council from last year not to proceed with my Correct. words. I would question whether this is a direct negative. Um, I did raise the matter yesterday, Your Worship. Democracy services about whether this requires a notice of motion. I noticed in the report that it refers to there was discussion on whether or not council needed to rescind their resolution <coughs> on October to be seen by a notice of motion from the elected members and legal advisors and sought 
and the clause 23 point six of the council standing order, the clause 36 schedule seven of the local government act. I have gone to the schedule seven period of the local government act, and it is inconsistent with standing orders in that the section says nothing in this court was entitled to local authority or committee to rescind or amend a decision made under delegated authority. So I raised that with the Mockery Services this morning, and I think that really needs to be tidied up for legal reasons. I'm not um, arguing against what the council is saying, but I am concerned that we follow correct processes. I agree. Um, is, is it on this point, Mike? Oh, yeah, I can, I can be. Um, well, <laughs> I've got, I got two points. One is, one is on this point, so I'll make that point first. Um, the Schedule 7 talks about the, it doesn't give the council the right to rescind a, a motion made under delegated authority, but this one wasn't made under delegated authority. It was made by this by this part, this assembly, and therefore this assembly can do whatever it wants. And, you know, I mean, well, I think we, we delegate, if you delegate something to the CEO or it's a committee, that's the CEO committee or committee makes a decision, you can't change that decision. Um, and that, 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 so you can, you can change your own decisions, you just can't change their decisions. Although this body appears to do that anyway, that, that's my point. I mean, you, 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 yeah, the, you, you can change this in the meantime. I can offer some clarity there, Your Worship. Our former decision was made under Section 19ZD of the Local Electoral Act, not Section 9, so it's not affecting that previous one, which will get annulled when this amendment bill comes through. And that's how I see it anyway. Yeah. No, just to be clear, the amendment that's been done does not annul the decision we took in regard to the Murray Wars. It annuls the poll. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It yeah, annuls the poll, not the yeah. 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 yeah, Sorry, Councillor. Sorry, Your Worship, if I go to 23. Seven. 23.6. A local authority on a recommendation in a report by the chairperson, chief executive of any committee or subcommittee may revoke or alter a part or a resolution passed at a previous meeting. We have not got that report <clears throat> and references clause 36, schedule 7 of the Local Government Act, which is the power to appoint committees, subcommittees, and other subordinate decision making bodies and joint committees. Council is none of the so I'm concerned me. that we need Hang on, Kelly. There are yeah, people talking, so I can't hear Anne. Oh, sure, we can't hear Anne. Uh, so I would be concerned if the council was to move to amend the resolution and I do require you to rule on this, Your Worship. I know there's a lot of hands up and a lot of interjections, but a point of order requires that you rule on this. Um, any amendment to the motion that is a direct negative of the existing resolution that on the table puts the existing, puts the amendment at risk. Nothing forestalls, of course, a compliant report being brought to council in April. So what we've been asked to do is we've got a motion on the table which has been seconded to not hold the pot. And what's being asked here is can we also include option two as part of that resolution? Can I just ask a point of clarification? Councillor Court is correct that you do need to make a ruling on this, but I would like to ask for a point of clarification. So we have a report that outlines two options in front of us. The resolution on the table is to not proceed with option one. Therefore, I would assume that the direction from council is to proceed with option two. What I'm saying is that the resolution is not clear in that. So I'm asking for clarity on that. There are two options in the report. We're effectively, with the current resolution, not proceeding with either of them. Uh, so the recommendation, right, is that what you're referring to or are you referring to? The recommendation to? is to not proceed with option one. So as I said, that would 
therefore direct, I assume, to proceed with option two. However, we're not providing clarity on that. And I don't want to see a situation where, as a council, we are unclear as to whether we're going with option two or doing nothing and default to doing nothing. So I'm asking for clearer direction on behalf of the staff. Right. Because, as I said earlier, it's my intention with the... I have to get agreement from 75% of you to put a resolution there to have discussions and working parties established. Um, it's my intention then to take that as an option. Um, so I'll need to take advice. I'm going to do the clarity provision. Yeah, I'm going to just ask. I, I understand what Councillor Smith is seeking. Um, I raised the matter yesterday as to whether this required a notice of motion to rescind the resolution of Council. The report, which I got very late last night, states in there that upon legal advice, we do not need a notice of motion because clause 23.6 of standing orders applies. 23.6 requires a report from the chairperson, chief executive, or any committee, subcommittee, or community boards which seeks to revoke all part of the previous resolution. We do not have that before us. Having said that, the matters that Councillor Smith are asking for can be addressed by a report to Council in April that addresses that. So as a matter of principle, as a footnote, the recommendation can be captured, but it cannot be included in the resolution today. today. I, yep. We well, could word it as it is written there and then just extend it to say so that we capture this right and instead uses uh, and uses the informal consultation process to gauge community feedback, which is what we're going to do. Can offer a solution, solution. Can offer a solution? No. Can we seek um, an adjournment? <laughs> just, just, just pause it. Right? So, so the situation we've got at the moment is, um, is that we've not spotted this, but we appreciate what the council is saying, that we need the clarity. We had assumed that if um, there are only two options and you vote against one of them, then we'll be exercising the second. So if this discussion hadn't happened at all, we would have just gone ahead with what was discussed um, in the context of this paper. Um, we, we know you're going to provide us with some clarification at some stage formally on whether the decision about Māori wards made under circumstances which have evaporated or are likely to with New York. We're looking for clear direction from governments as to whether you want to revisit that or stick with it. We'd expect to get that formally. Worship, I'm concerned that the Chief Executive is debating. I do recall you to rule on my point of view. Yeah, I thank you. Can you just restate it, please? And can you just restate your comments, please? Councillor Smith signalled foreshadowed an amendment to include option two. I've raised a point of order that's saying include option two at this point in time. It's not compliant with standing orders and scheduled to be run of the local government act. I do, however, have a solution, and if it helps you at this point, I can foreshadow that now that the council can request a further report to come to council that it catches the matter of addressing option two. Which is it's not, it's not, it's the not the chair, tabled as a matter of timing. It is what I'm suggesting through the chair. All right. Well, in which case, then, you're right, Rachel? Sorry, I'm out of order speaking, sideline speaking to Deputy Mayor Court. I think the um, what Councillor Tepanier has raised is also about supporting the informal consultation as part of the representation review, that it's not just about bringing a further report, it's about 
going through the process that's outlined there. Um, so while I'm comfortable what, with what Councillor Cordes suggested, it's not about, for me, it's not about the ultimate of remaking the decision. It's about still taking the opportunity to ask our communities how they feel, which we've been given this option here. Yep, no, I understand that. And I think Anne's got a proposal that will help us achieve that as well. So I'm going to rule that um, we, we won't include option two in the resolution. And that we, but I am happy, subject to agreement with the council, that we will then take a further resolution on that point as, as Councillor Court has indicated she will move. So I've moved more for a second, and we will deal with this recommendation that's here. Is there any other person who wants to comment about the non binding poll? Mike, do you want to comment? Yeah, I do. Uh, look, I was, I was going to comment, but this is a really strange really, really strange um, recommendation that the council doesn't. I mean, effectively, you're, you're moving that, I mean, you're moving a negative, which is utter, utter nonsense. And, and we've, just, we've just established right now why it's utter, utter nonsense. I mean, we, we didn't, it wasn't, there wasn't a resolution to hold an online poll, and then here you're saying we don't want one. You know, you, you, we, could, we could go away here and not have this meeting, and we would have achieved this meeting, the outcome of this meeting, of not, not doing something. That, that's, 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 but that's, that's the first thing. Um, so we, we, if, if the council had wanted to have option two, we should have had something. The motion should have been option two, not not option one. That's ridiculous. The second thing is um, this council didn't move to hold a binding poll. Okay, it, it, and the, the, the language used, and I'll quote the yes. thing, was a whole of whole of electors. It, did, it didn't reference a part of the local government, local electorate. It didn't use the word non-binding. Okay, it, we may have discussed non-binding; it may have been understood, but it wasn't written down. And yet, you know, in, in the in this report, it quite clearly states that the council moved to hold a binding poll. And now I, I don't even know whether or not legally you can hold. You could have voted to hold a non-binding poll. Sorry, a binding poll without. The, without the petition, I don't know, but it appears to me that this whole, you know, it, this this report is inconsistent from inconsistent and illogical from woe to go, uh, or go to woe, sorry. Um, so that's my point, and we and we've just established here um, exactly why. Um, yeah. So no, nah, I mean this is this is thank, thank you for that, and that's one of the things we're trying to regularise because what we've done previously, particularly the way in which we worded the resolution, could have been. Yeah, um, just to support the resolution as it stands, I might take um, Mike's point, but we are dealing with a unique circumstance where effectively the Minister has put up retrospectively effective legislation, which kind of leaves our previous um, resolution kind of in limbo. And I think, taking on board the point you make, I think the point, the value of this recommendation and passing it is just clarity. So people understand we are not going to go down that path because there would be no purpose in doing so. It would be an expensive way to achieve very little. Um, we have options open to us again to read the legislation. Um, it's an interesting document, but I think, um, not denying Mike's points, but really I do think for the sake of clarity, just to put aside the notion and make it clear that we are putting aside the notion of making a whole on this topic. So I have no problem with the recommendation as it stands. Thank you. All right, unless there's any new points, I think we've had a good discussion on people put to this the motion that we do not hold a non-binding poll. Um, I'll, it's been moved as steps, would you think? Well, John, did you want to comment? No, look, it's been, been said. It's just a but what that clinging was as my comment going to be, just for clarity, because the public out there wants you to know. Thank you. All right. So I'll put the motion. All in favour, please say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. Stones. Aye. Councillor Reddit, So, so sorry. <laughs> you're, you're a no, Kelly. I'm an aye. You, you're in favour, and, and Felicity's in favour. And Matty? Is in favour? No, no, I'm abstaining, John, because I'm absolutely oh, confused okay. with, the whole thing, with the whole thing. Thank you very much. Okay, so the motion is carried. Thank you. Now, Councillor Court has indicated that she wished to move uh, further motion. I have a question, move further motion. I offered a, a, a 
and alternative motion, but I would like to repeat that um, was the one that suggested moving an amendment to capture option two. I'd like, if we could, your worship, if we had a wee adjournment, yes. which would enable council the opportunity to liaise with the democracy services and your colleagues on formulating what that really might look like. Okay, all right. I'm happy to adjourn with a 10 minutes piece of petition. I hope so. Even for them, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we could come back at 10.25. 10, Can we ask that the recording be turned on? Yeah. Yes. So we're not live streaming.
Do you want us to come up? Right, so I'm meeting to resume. Okay. Yeah. As Mokula said, hoping at 5.25 past, so we're all underway. The Council agreed to discuss the community with the community via informal consultation to gauge community feedback on marriage representation report back to Council, uh, report back to the 8th of April Council meeting. And Rachel, you wish to move that? Absolutely. Thank you. By the way, just before you do, is there any disagreement? Can I, is it, I need to have 75% agree to that? That we consider this. No, no, okay. We're okay. All yeah, right. Just Rachel, you'll yeah. move. You're happy to see okay. And and uh, Kelly, well, second. Kelly second. Okay. Thanks. Okay. okay. Is there any discussion? Can I can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, it's Felicity. It was just the word yes, representation. Felicity. Could it say representation and participation? Reputation and what? Sorry. Participation. Representation. <laughs> And participation. And participation. Okay. Are you happy with that, Rachel? Uh, no. No, you're not. Oh, it's your motion. You don't have to agree to it, so take it out, please. What? Um, I think, and did I see sure. you wanted to make? No, I just. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 yes, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> Matty, your call. Matty, the floor is yours. Why? Why are you not happy with that, Rachel? Uh, because it's specific to what's in the report. For standing orders, it's really important that we stick to what's outlined in the report. I understand that's frustrating, Maddie, but trying to be very technical and stick to our role, stick to our knitting. I understand what Councillor Foy is trying to achieve. It doesn't preclude us from having those conversations as elected members, but it is important that we stick to the technicalities of the report. I just want to know what what's informal consultation mean. What that is, Matty, is uh, councillor, is um, is the the roadshow that's going out to talk to the, all the public over the the next month or so on the LTP, on the district plan, on Far North 2100, and on this the representation of uh, on Māori. They're, they're all part of the agenda to talk to the public and for elected members to get feedback on. So we're really just confirming the pre-existing plan and adding that um, the observations will be brought back to council for formal consideration. Yeah, so it's when you and I have a chat with someone in the RWE yeah. pub about Maori wards, basically. It's, yeah, OK. That, Good that, one. that becomes Thank rather you. informal, depending on how many points we've had. <laughs> Um, Belinda, I understand, wants to make a comment. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. I was just querying um, what was put up on the screen in relation to bringing it back to the April meeting. I'm looking at option two, and the paragraph under one, two, and three states that um, if there's a need for further consideration and or workshops, that council still has time during the month of April leading into the 20th of May council meeting. Can you tell me why... Um, you would want a shorter time frame, please. I'm just interested. Thank you. Your Worship, 8th of April is outlined in the first paragraph of that option. It's the first step. Yeah. Does that give that, member ward clarity? Is that okay, Belinda? Um, could you just put the wording back up again? I thought it said... Uh, I just sort of read differently. It says the 8th of April. It says, says 8th of April in both yep. of us. Uh, okay, I was reading underneath the options. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any other comments? Otherwise, I'm going to put the resolution. All right, the resolution is that. Can I have a pick up, please? The resolution is that. Council agreed to discuss with the community by informal consultation to gauge community feedback on Maori representation and report back on the 8th of April 2021 at, at the council meeting. I just make the point, of course, 
that while we're having that discussion, as we're out around doing our stuff, it won't just be Maori representation. We also have a representation review. There are a whole number of things that we will be discussing with the community. And while I'm happy for us to have acknowledged that we need a discussion on Maori representation, which I'm going to ask us to talk about shortly uh, with the consent of everybody here, um, nevertheless, just to, everyone needs to understand that that's one part of the discussion we'll be having as we go out. Uh, for example, I'm down to go to the Monetary Festival, and I assume that I will get uh, asked a number of questions about the Monetary Report, for example. So there'll be a whole number of things that we may want to feed in. Anyway, enough from me. Uh, so it's been moved and it's been seconded by Kelly. All in favour, please say aye. 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 Contrary, no. No, Matt, you're voting against or is it No, for, for. For. Oh, you're for it. All, all for? Okay. The, the thank you. It's um, passed unanimously. Thank you very much for that and uh, do appreciate the way in which we can deal with these issues and still be able to talk to each other. So thank you very much. I said earlier that I would like us, given the discussion we had yesterday, to have a set up a system whereby we have far better input into the communities, if that's the right word, the DW level of federated farmers and business and, and the community thing that John Busich keeps talking about. Um, I would like with your consent to have a discussion and have a res resolution moved, but I need the agreement of 75% of you to discuss and move a resolution. Do I have agreement so to do? Well, can we just discuss that with you? This is, it could be problematic. Why? This is nice, I can see it. Um, um, I think you've got a notice for a notice of motion that's not just about the majority of... No, you can't go to the... You've got to, I mean, you've got to, um, you've got to comply with two requirements, right? You've got to first state why, why it wasn't on the agenda. Yep. And secondly, you've got to state why it can't wait. Yep. Just, um, so the council can the reason why the discussion cannot be delayed until the subsequent meeting. Mm -hmm. I was not on the unit, may be brought before the meeting through a report from either the chief executive or the chief person. Will that be Please note that nothing in the standing order removes a requirement to meet the provision six, which we have to consultation and decision making. Chairman, I need to issue a raise with you about an hour ago. His wish was just, we just need to make sure he's on a good safe ground here. He's raising a resolution that's not in the papers. And we just want to know whether that's possible or not. If you guys can make a notice of the motion and a, a new topic that we would like to discuss. Time out. I just want to make sure you're on a chill ground here. You wish to make sure that's well set. Maybe that take a couple of minutes to sort this out for you. I'll adjourn for five minutes. I'll keep the meeting adjourned for five minutes. Great.
What's that? Flying on a Steve Jobs. Well, we're making... Bing and John. That's what we're doing. Indeed, and we're trying to do our best to... Can we read the structure online? Yes, can we just... Um, yep. Can I just read that just before you do? Uh, we are live. Oh, okay. Just drop it down, please. So, yes. It's that part there, that... So, that right, goes. so the resolution that we're going to... Uh, the meeting is resumed. And the resolution we're going to suggest, which I'll be happy to move, that as, and I need your first of all, have we got um, agreement that we consider this? Do I need to see you? No, no, we don't. Okay. So what we're asking here, the council direct the chief executive to bring a report to council meeting to establish a working party to look at options for improving community participation in far north district council decision making. And we've tried to make it general because what I wanted to do is cover all aspects of our community, including married participation, including representatives from farming, including business, uh, you name it, John usages, small groups, solicitors, representation on committee, it can all be part of that whole package. And Sean just asked me, was it to include Mary Woods? Absolutely it does, that's part of it. But the, the thing is, I discussed with Harry last night, Mary Woods is but one part of how we in, involve and participate with <coughs> And um, as Felicity has said, having uh, Mary representing voting rights on a committee may be a thing that we want to consider. And so it's all those things that we want. So uh, if we can just put the resolution back up, I'm going to move it. And then I'm going to ask John Busey to second and speak to it, and then we will uh, have open the floor for discussion. I just re say again, the whole purpose of this is for us as governments, rather than just direct the chief executive, as I've got to say we've done in the past, and then wondered why the hell things haven't happened because we haven't actually supported what we've passed. I want us to be responsible for this. That's the purpose of it. So it's been moved. Council Director, Chief Executive, John Buse, to second it. John, the floor is yours. Yeah, thanks, uh, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, this is something that has been dear to my heart for quite a, quite a while, and we recognise up in the north that there is a need for better representation at all levels. And this work, so in support of the working party, it has, has gives us that opportunity, the back of you about the working party, to go out to all the respective um, you know, hapu at that level. Because we see that they're talking about now going down to the Manafima level and achieving that. And that looks utterly difficult and impossible because we've got 200 plus something hapu currently. But I don't believe that's the case. I've done a lot of work around um, local communities. I spoke to the hapu in, in, in this area here. There's a lot of excitement. I've spoken to a lot of government there. There's a lot of excitement as well. And they're saying we are progressive in doing this. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, by the way. There's a lot of work to do to do on that. So I definitely support that. The other, I've actually, just so, so you're representing me correctly, the other, in my role as chair, I've been also pushing the top level, and that is utilising the committees and council for better governance making. Mm -hmm. And that is as what well, we've done with Bruce on there. But there's nothing stopping us putting other parties on there. Now that is that role there is more of us, more to assist, you know, more to help and assist council make better governance decisions, yeah. and and that's a good uh, tool as well. This one is giving representation right across the whole of the far north, and also setting up, setting up. And I'll finish with this with the chief, setting us up to face the future potentially with the three waters removal and far north council, far north district council being totally changed. It's clearly going to be different, it may not even exist. So um, let's do the work now so that we do not lose the local government. So that includes that part as well. Thank you very much, Councillor Usage, Councillor Smith, and then Councillor Foy. Thank you, Your Worship. I will keep it brief. I'm in support of uh, this. I just want to note uh, most of you know that I sit at LGNZ Governance and Strategy Advisory Group. We met yesterday, and the single focus was the future of local government. We will be required to do this anyway under the proposed conversations that are being had with DIA um, in terms of what that looks like. And if we want to stand up and hold our feet to the fire in the localism space and say this is why we are relevant, then we need to be doing this anyway. So I'm in full support. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Councillor Foy. 
and then Councillor Kingdom. Thank you. Uh, it's just to outline um, my point prior. Um, the staff have clarified this for our questions. Um, the, the different under legislation with uh, representation is Māori wards. Participation is anything outside of Māori wards. For example, I brought up um, uh, EWI appointed representatives on committees with voting rights and also attending workshops, etc. cetera, um, and um, obviously having speaking rights. So uh, that's why I was raising the word participation, because I feel that the community need to know that there are other options as well for better Māori participation within our organisation, considering we don't have standing committees and we don't have we appointed representatives currently. We have a specialist, um, Bruce Robinson, about accountancy, um, but we don't have a specialist on how Māori views, um, particularly in the areas of infrastructure, uh, where we have a lot of consenting requirements for infrastructure um, and strategy, um, which has um, a clear mandate to give um, iwi um, high consideration um, before and um, significant waiting as part of uh, that statutory requirement. Uh, that's why those two committees in particular, I feel, need to be looked at and what participation uh, should be considered with iwi appointed representatives. Thank you, Councillor Foy. Appreciate that. Uh, Councillor Clinton, please. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, just a comment following Rachel that we are going to have to do this at some scale. Um, I was also at the PAG meeting yesterday and we queried local Umbrella MEP officials about what Mahana Fenwa means in the context of having um, local authorities, DOC, and Mahana Fenwa around the table to develop these combined plans they're talking about under the new RMA report. The answer that we managed to extract after some um, hesitation on that part was that yes, they expect us to drill down to the quite fine grained, um, even though the farmer level, um, certainly small land trusts will have, have rights to be around that table. How that's going to work in practice, I invite everybody to try and uh, work out in far north and wake up in particular. It's going to be very difficult. This, the intention of this is good precursor to that, so let's try it out. My query, though, I'm just a bit unsure about the process. Um, we're asking the chief executive to bring a paper to tell us to establish a working party, or no, 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 tell us what it would look like. I'm just not quite sure what the cost is. might be on it, what it might cost, how, it might, how often it might meet, um, just to scope out the options for you, bring, oh, bring right. some variations of that back so to see what it would look like. And the chief executive has to get into my head so he understands what I'm doing. This big is telling me to get in here. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Councillor uh, Thank you, Mayor Carter. Um, I'm not opposed to this. I think that it will have merit. Um, but when I think about the mahi already going on for council staff. Um, I just want to ensure that the story we're telling or the engagement we're having with our community is in alignment, so that will need to be captured for this working party. I mean, the mahi going on, I harped on about this at the workshop yesterday, for this these four massive kaupapa that we've got going on, right? The yep. long-term plan, the final 2100 strategic um, spatial plan, um, the district plan and our representation of you are all a part of it and all a part of the story and the way that we're going out to our community with this road trip, which I'm looking forward to, rather than trying to tell people to come to us, we're looking at actually going to them, which is great. And I see this as being a part of it all, but aligning it uh, so that it's telling the same story or, or listening with ears. I don't want our communities to, when I was on filming for this um, road trip, for our film, Your Worship, um, I got uh, an evil from a resident of Kuhuku who said, stop asking us what we want, we've already told you, just bloody do it. 
um, the community don't see a difference between when council goes to ask them what they want or a councillor or a community board or when the New Zealand uh, Waka Kotahi, the New Zealand Transport Agency, go out and ask them to develop a, a, a township plan for Kohu Kohu. It's one and the same. We've already said it. You need to open your ears and listen or take it in and do something. So um, I don't know. The, the, the thing we're doing around this road trip is designed in a way that I want to make sure that this, which has a far greater reach, also dips into that at the same time. Um, I also don't want to dilute the importance, and I'll, uh, and I'll total call um, Councillor Foy here, dilute the importance that we have as an obligation to ensure Māori participation in our council processing. This here is looking at our community participation, which is a huge thing at the same time, but I don't want that diluted from our uh, statutory obligations under um, Section 4 of the Local Government Act for including Māori participation in our governance in our decision making at a council level, whatever that is. So that's also important too. But um, for what it is and, and what it's what it's looking to do, um, if done right, then kapoi. Kira, thank you, Michael, for those comments. Um, and I just make the point that it's great that we're going out around our district scheme, and it's great that we're going out about the 2100 and, and spatial planning and all the things that we're going to consult on. And we'll get some input on it. But the thing, and, and you touched on it actually, the thing that frustrates the, the individual and the community is the footpath needs fixing, or that sort of stuff. And that's where we get the negative impact when they can't get an answer. And what I'd love us to do, and I'll accept all those things you say, and absolutely we need to adhere to the responsibility we have uh, under the law in relation to Māori. I also would like to think that we have a better, we can end up with a better system where when the community talks about a footpath and Mike's frustrated and knocked his teeth out several times over it, for example, we have a system that we can respond far better to. That's it. You're just going to hold your chief executive to the law, John. Yes. As long as he's able to flout the law in regards to delegations, then, then yeah. and, and with with your with Mike, your consent, then you will never get it. Accept all that, understand all that, but it's not just Sean's responsibility for the stuff. It's also ours. We oh, that, 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 that's what I'm You've got to hold his feet to the fire. Well, it's not just his feet; it's our feet, because at the end of the day, we also need to be doing our part. And I'm not sure that we are, and that's why I want us to do this. Thank you. All right. Well, I think we've had a full uh, discussion on this. So unless there's any other comment, I'm going to put the motion. All in favour, please say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. Aye. Thank you. Aye. Thank you. Um, and Sean, um, there's no hurry for this if you can have it for Thursday. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> yep, Thursday. <laughs> Yeah, but you, you and I were talking about so you can get it here and find out the sex of what I'm yeah. looking for and need to talk to the council on this. Um, but I do want us to get on with this as soon as possible. I don't want it to lie around for another 12 months. I would like to think that we as elected members can have a structure in place that we can leave for the council, whoever that may be, so that they've got something to work on, something that you know, hasn't been there in the past. That, all right, so I'm just trying to think. Is there, uh, we've got a meeting on Thursday. Um, there was one thing I was thinking, Oh, that's right. No. I, just so you know, I uh, got an email from a person yesterday who was complaining that. Sorry. Kelly, thank you. Thank you. Kelly's just signing off. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. I just had an email uh, from someone yesterday who was complaining that I and we weren't doing enough to support tourism and so on. And um, I rang them and I must say the response was not positive. So we get that occasionally. That's politics. All right. Can I admit I don't, can't think of anything else. You can. See you there. Oh, Matt. Yes. Just another thing, I just got a phone call from two angry residents down 
pulls around. At this very moment, Fulton Hogan are dropping truckloads of metal um, in that erosion part. Remember when we went on that bus trip and there was a bit of erosion off the river? Onto the road up Fort Cole and Naomi Foster's place. Are we aware of that? Eddie Short will give you a call uh, as soon as you finish the meeting and then we can plug into you. No, okay. Right, everybody. Well, thank you all for your participation. Drive home safely and we will see you all Thursday. Of course. Rachel, you Thank you all very much, everybody.